Hi, my name is Jay. Welcome to my channel. In 2021, I spent most of the time driving along the CDT as my girlfriend did a through hike of the Continental Divide Trail. If you don't know what that is, it's a trail that goes from Mexico to Canada. It goes through New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, and some of Idaho. And throughout maybe about four and a half months, I followed along in my Forerunner and I just camped out wherever I could. In fact, a lot of times I actually met up with her and we camped together. But I want to share with you how I was able to find dispersed camping and only paid for a few campsites altogether because those, especially around the national parks, are really necessary. So I'm going to share that all with you. So come back after the intro. In case you didn't know, in the United States, there is a lot of public land. I'll give you a number of rundown of like how many acres of public land there is and maybe what percentage, but it is actually illegal for you to just pull over somewhere and camp out in most of these places. There are a lot of places where they don't allow you or just vehicles aren't allowed anyway, but most of the places that are national forest or BLM and there are even wildlife management areas. They're not wild wilderness areas. They're wildlife management areas. They allow it grasslands. There's public uh, federal grasslands out there that are also public. Although if there are no roads, you don't want to just be driving through the field, of course. So because of that, you can actually go out and just camp for months, weeks, maybe years, but not entirely, but you could stay out there for quite a while out West from say Western Nebraska on the Dakotas West. There is a lot more public land. So out there, it's a lot easier to find camping because there's more public land and more campsites and less people East of Mississippi or so. There is a lot less public land and there's a lot more people. So if people are looking for campsites, there's going to be more competition for dispersed sites. So it's a lot harder. I have yet to go dispersed camping throughout the Eastern area just because I know it'll be harder. So I can't say for sure that it's, you know, it could be super, super hard, but you might be driving a lot longer to find a good site. Whereas out West, like Colorado, Wyoming, New Mexico, Arizona, all those areas, there are places all over and I will share with you how I find campsites. I considered the best ways to show you how I found camping. The laptop, if I recorded that screen, it would give you a nice widescreen view and it would seem better. But I thought I'd share with you exactly how I did it. And I just use my cell phone. Anytime I had service, I would pull up my trusty Samsung S21. It's just a 5G, not the ultra or anything. And I'm recording the screen right now. And I would just go to Gaia. As you can see, I use Gaia. I'm going to show it to you in vertical mode because that's the best way Gaia works. Um, if I do horizontal, the bars just fill up into top and bottom, so it looks horrible. But I'm just going to give you an example of after Tina finished her through hike, how I found campsites. Now, with Gaia, you can pull up different layers. That's Gaia's main strength. A lot of people think it's just a mapping program, but it does so much more. You can pull up like current wildfires, light pollution in the area, so you can see where you can go to get the best chance of seeing shooting stars and Milky Way and things like that. For this purpose though, I prefer Gaia Tapo and public land. Public land is of course the best one. You can also change the opacity of the layers. So sometimes, usually I'll put it like midway, but if I'm looking for public land to camp at, I'd like to get it further up because it's darker. And it's more obvious here, as you can see with the green. Dark green is national forest. You'll find brown, kind of like a tan, that's BLM. And some purple areas you'll find are like state trust lands. I know that's true for Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado. I don't know if it's true for everywhere, but you'll have to look it up in the little legend. On the very bottom right, there's an I, and you can look up the legends there. 
So for now, let's go after Tina finished we drove southeast and we decided to stay at Lewis and Clark National Forest and it's kind of cheating because uh, I marked where we camped out that night right there so um, ignore that but what I do is it's a national forest that's a big one so it's easy to kind of look around what I do once I see a big national forest I'll maximize the screen a little bit more and I'll kind of look around and especially look towards the yellow highways because you're gonna find offshoot roads from there and I would just kind of go through and the solid white lines in Gaia means generally two-wheeler some parts are high clearance two-wheel and some car some parts could be high clearance four-wheel but for the most part two-wheel drives can go through the straight white lines they're also more reliably open Whereas the dash lines are often for four wheel drive, high clearance only. Although some spots you can get away with two wheel. And sometimes these dash lines, they'll be closed. They'll have been turned into trails or sold as private land. It could be anything. They're not 100% reliable unless they have a name. I found if the dash lines have a name, they tend to, there's a better chance they'll be open. But the solid lines are good. Now this solid line, as you can tell, it's clear in the middle, so it's private land. Can't camp there, but it does go into public land right here. But unfortunately, you see it's very short. And you'll have to find dispersed camping in that little segment, which is only four or 5,000 feet, about a mile. But as you can see on the right, it's very steep. After that, it goes into dotted land, dotted roads, and uh, or dash roads. And you have to... Use your luck to find if there's good campsites there. For what we're gonna do, let's check it out. I do, I zoom out a little and I look for landmarks. Notice Route 89 makes a sharp right. And when it hooks right again, that's where the road is. So let's go into Google Maps here. And look for Route 89. In fact, it's very obvious right there. And the dirt road was right here. So it was somewhere just after it hooks left, where it becomes public, and it's after this junction. So right about here is where it turns public. So what I'll do is I'll pull up the satellite map for the area, zoom in, and as you can see, you can actually make out campsites here. In fact, this is exactly what I do, by the way. I pull up the satellite map, and this is not 100%, by the way, because the satellite pictures can be old. Places could have been overgrown. Places could have been just demolished. Uh, it could be anything, but chances are good that they are still there. So you'll notice along this Adams Creek Road, this is what I look for right there in the center. That is a fire ring. It looks like a little clearing, a little road. You can see tire tracks and a fire ring. Oftentimes, if you see a fire ring, it means that there's level enough ground there so you can camp there. It's not true all the time. I found a lot of fire rings in the worst spots because people will set up a tent or a park and set up a hammock or something, I guess. But this one, it looks like vehicles pull in and there's a fire ring. So that's actually a viable camp spot. So I would go in and I would just mark it, save it as campsite. And I'd continue up the road. In fact, as you go up, you can see there's another road track right there. In fact, let's go to full screen here. Let's go to widescreen and you can see a little better. All right, let's go up the road a little bit more. And you'll notice there really isn't that much dispersed camping along here. Nothing. It looks like there's a clearing on the right a little, right around right around center here, but there is, seems to be no access. Just because you don't see access doesn't mean there is not access though, because the trees could be covering up the roads. So it's entirely possible when you drive this road that you'll see something. There's a little hook, another clearing. Doesn't look like any access, doesn't look like any fire rings. If there are no fire rings there, chances are it could be a little open area that's just full of tall grass 
or it's a hillside because you don't really see the elevation as well. So don't rely on that. And you notice on the right side, well, I guess on the east side of the road, there's a big clearing. It looks like a formerly logging area. I don't see any fire rings though, or tire tracks. If it's an open area, tire tracks give it away that people have camped there. But it doesn't look like there are any tire tracks there. In fact, because of that and the trees, I'm thinking on the right, it drops off and on the left, it goes up. So no campsites anywhere along this road. Now this part's dashed road on Gaia already, but as you can tell, the road actually looks pretty good. Google Maps puts this gray line over the road, so it's hard to tell, but now if you go here, there's a road that goes in. That doesn't necessarily mean there is camping there. It just can mean ATVs go explore down there or hunters can go down there but it looks like there's nothing there it could be something there but probably not and it looks like the road is rather rough i wouldn't i would say a high clearance four-wheel drive could probably make it but might get some scratches some more scratches and there is a hook and what i do now if i feel like i've gone too far i go back into gaia so we are about the middle here where that junction is so it's still public land. In fact, I like to look for areas with huge chunks of private or public land. That way you don't have to keep checking Gaia over and over to see what's public and what's private. What would be nice is if Gaia's satellite pictures looked better and then you could switch the satellite as you're looking at the map. But for some reason, Gaia's satellite pictures are not that good. I mean, it's okay, but it is not super good. Like that looks like there's a campsite right there. I don't know if that's the same one we saw before, but it's not nearly as good as Google Maps satellite pictures. So I like to switch away. And you'll see if we take a left at this junction, it stays in public land. And if we take a right, there's an incredibly straight road for a national forest road. That, hmm, we'll check. So let's see, let's hook left and see what happens. I would wager less people would go to non-straight road. So there might be, if there are spots there, they would be open. Hmm, nothing and it dead ends. The road dead ends there, according to Google Maps but it looks like it keeps going for a little while. It's just hard to see. Oftentimes when it's hard to see, it could be a road or it could just be super overgrown and you won't be able to drive through without a lot of damage. Now let's go on this, along the straight road here and take a right on this road and look around. As you can see, there are a couple of tire tracks here. I if I was desperate, I would just park off in the grass right there and camp out. It looks level enough, but I wouldn't count on it as a good campsite. It's awful close to the road as well. So we'll keep going up the road and it looks like it forks again. And now I've never looked at these satellite pictures before, so I don't know where we can find anything, but it looks like not much there. There is some open land. Let's go up this creek. According to Gaia, once we hook a left right there after it's straight, it goes up a little bit. And then there's a like a hillside. Let's go up that. Mm, if you see here, there's, nah, there's not much. <laughs> Uh, could be a spot. Sometimes you will sit there and stare at your phone and look at maps and you'll just go up a road forever and there doesn't seem to be anything. So what you'll have to do is change strategies. Go into Gaia again, pull out a little and look for more roads. Now, 
this road, I chose to look along this road because there is a campground up there. And usually if there's a campground, cars can get there. And oftentimes these just national forest campsites, not on a holiday, away from the national parks are usually available. So if you try to find dispersed sites and you strike out, you can often go back to the campground and pay $10 or so and stay tonight in case it's late and you really can't look anymore. So what I did was remember to hook Strawberry Butte, Lewis and Clark. So we got to hook a right and you'll notice here it turns to public land and then private land, public, private, public, private. It's hard to look at Google Maps and know exactly where you're looking unless you keep flipping back. So I would opt to look here once it starts to pu be public land for good. So let's go here, find the highway again. And there's the road. Now if we go along here, nice series of creeks along here. There's a nice house behind a hill. Uh, it's still a mixture of public private. And I remember right after it hooked right, and it hooks north, that's where public land starts. So it would be right about here, right in the middle. So let's look up Sally pictures. Going up Moose Creek, and you'll find there's a lot of campsites right here. There's actually quite a bit along the left. The problem with this campsite is it's a very wide open campsite. So a lot of people could be there. You could be in the north end and someone might camp out near the southern end or even way down south. This is a really, really wide one. But often people try to stay away from each other unless it's crowded. But also if it's a really big site, I usually leave it because I'll leave it for someone else with a big group, multi-vehicle group to take. I'm just one car, so I look up the road some more and you notice there's a creek and that's Moose Creek Campground. And we're not gonna stay there, that's our backup plan. So we'll go up the road some more. And you will notice more campsites throughout. There's a very obvious firing right there. Of course I dropped the pin because that's where I stayed. And you'll notice also further down on the left side of the river there's another car. If you're really lucky, you'll find a bunch of cars in the satellite pictures. And the cars are a dead giveaway. Like this one is obviously towing a camper. And RVs, you can tell. And those are dead giveaways that if an RV can get there, two-wheel drive cars can get there. But you'll notice right here, there are some spots. It's hard to tell, but there are multiple big sites. So all along the right there's multiple people camped out on the river on the left there's one left of the road that i dropped the pin on and there's one further south so along this road there are numerous dispersed campsites i don't see any more so let's go further north and further north you'll see there's more open areas but no tire tracks so not people have not been there but this one's another one there's one on the left and one on the right. The one on the left is a little closer to the road than the one on the right, but the one on the right is much further down a dirt road to get to than the one on the left. So if you camp at the one on the left, people driving by can see you. If you park, if you camp at the one on the right, they may see you, but you still have this big open area. This one looks like a big area for multiple vehicles, but it's a better spot than the other one. The other thing to think about too is oftentimes the wind comes from the west, but you want to keep track of which direction the wind's going. Because when a bunch of ATVs drive down these dirt roads, that cloud of dust will just blow whatever direction the wind's going, which is often towards the east. So you don't want to camp right next to the road downwind. If it's upwind, you might be okay unless you get unlucky and it shifts, but you want to be away from the dust, the way direction the dust will fly because you'll just get covered in dust inside. 
So let's imagine that's not taken. We'll just keep going further up. Sometimes you'll see things that looks like a firing, but it's not. And this one, I can't tell if it's an old firing or not. It could be, but there are no tire tracks in the satellite pictures, but so it's not frequented. Google Maps satellite pictures are pretty reliable, not 100%. In fact, there's a nice little dirt road that shoots off to nowhere. Let's see where it goes. Gaia probably has it marked as a dashed line. Let's check it out. Yep, it would be this road right here. This is actually thinner dash, so it would be definitely four-wheel drive. Let's just keep going up this main road. And any more? Any more spots? Looks like there are clearings here and there, so it looks promising. If you can get to those clearings, you can camp there. There may be clearings that are not visible in the satellite pictures. And here's that dashed road. It's very overgrown in Sally pictures. Nothing at the end. There's switchbacks. If you see switchbacks like that, it means you're going up or down. So if you go here, you're going down. Let's just go back and keep looking. Unfortunately, we're not seeing any more vehicles. Uh, there's another spot I dropped the pin. If you can see, there's a little road and there's a clearing, so likely a campsite. In fact, on the left too, it's not very obvious, but it's kind of a dirt road right there. So I would say that that is 50% chance a road to a campsite. So let's keep going up. Ah, I dropped the pin there because I saw the vehicle in the satellite picture. And there is a little dirt road that turns into it. So that is, I would say, a 100% chance that that is a dispersed campsite that has been used. And if you look up here off the sides, I often will look, any clearings, look for firings again. The firings are the surefire signal that people have camped there. And most of the time, it's fine. In national forests, most of the time, it is fine. So Unless there are signs, but... Nothing here. Might have to travel quite a bit before finding another dispersed campsite. Let's go along Moose Creek Road some more. Looks like it's deep down and up. That almost looks like a road right there. Might turn off from the main road, but I don't see a campsite, so I'm not sure why that's there. Maybe for fishing. Uh, I dropped another pin there. As you can see, I search pretty far up the road. And right there, you can see again, dirt road, because of people driving in the field, and you'll see cars. Again, cars, dead giveaway. This, you might have two separate people stay here because it seems far enough away. But it looks like you will maybe not need Four-wheel drive, high clearance, but you might definitely want four-wheel drive if it's been raining because you can see the puddles there. And the puddles will always come back because they'll never really fill in the puddles. And as you go further, further. Now at this point, I would stop looking for campsites along that road just because there are so many dispersed sites along there. And it's away from any national parks. If it's a weekend, You'll have to get there a little early, maybe four, three, unfortunately. It would be ideal, actually. What I like to do is Fridays, try to find dispersed campsites around four and just stay there till Sunday morning. And then Sunday morning, go somewhere and hike. And I'll stay there two nights and edit videos or eat or cook something that would take more time to cook, just anything, just because Saturday nights, it's just much harder to find camping. And unfortunately, Fridays, it's also hard after everyone gets off work and goes looking for campsites. So try to find campsites earlier, Friday, 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock or so. If there's a holiday, be aware of that. And try to beat the holiday rush and try to get a spot earlier Friday or Thursday even.
One resource I used a lot in the beginning when I started the car life was freecampsites.net and there were a couple of other apps. I'll list them right here. And mostly I used freecampsites.net. I just didn't like it because it doesn't work offline. It just caches what's in your browser when you look at it. It's very useful in that people submit campsites. So there could be places that are not in National Forest and not BLM that are free campsites like state run campsites or county or even city run campsites. There are a lot of places that are actually free. You just would never know unless you went there or you heard about it. And fortunately, freecampsites.net does have a lot of information like that, especially when you go further away from the western side, just because there's so much public land there and there's more competition for camping. You'll have to look up freecampsites.net and try to find campsites through that um, just because it's just difficult without knowing really. Along the CDT, I did not use freecampsites.net at all. In fact, there were a few times I did look at it to see where it marked along my route and I would avoid that National Forest Road. Um, if it's in freecampsites.net, it'll be busier than just regular dispersed sites. So, I mean, that's not true 100% of the time, but chances are good because there are a lot of new car van dwellers out there and freecampsites.net is just the easiest way to find campsites instead of just driving down a dirt road like a crazy person <laughs> looking for some place to stay. So I like to avoid those. So that's primarily how I found campsites throughout the year is I just use Gaia with the public lands overlay and Google Maps satellite pictures. Gaia is a little more difficult to learn than say all trails, but at first I didn't know what to do with it. So I subscribed to it for five years just to commit to it because I know people liked it. But once I learned it, I love that thing. You can just pull up overlays of all kinds of things. It was really nice when you could pull up an overlay of wildfires and just see where they are so you can kind of gauge where the smoke might be. So really useful if you don't have Gaia. I mean, you can get by. I have found that that is the best resource for public land overlays though. There was an app I used called Public Land or something like that, but it didn't have offline storage. So it only cached a little bit of what you looked at. So it is just difficult to use um, Gaia. Fortunately, you can mark spots and then you can navigate to it. And when you're done, you can even map out hiking trails with it. I used Gaia to plan out our Glacier National Park four night backpacking trip. Cause when you plan it out, it gives you the mileage. It gives you the altitude change, ascent, descent, and it's pretty nice. And it's all stored offline. So you can pull it up anytime you want. Most of the places you'll go to find dispersed camping, you won't find satellite signals. So it's good to have everything loaded on your phone before you go, especially Google maps, try to download anywhere you're going. I usually do stated or not stated at a time, but huge chunks of time, space at a time, just offline maps, download and keep it there just because it'll be there. And if you download it somewhere like at Walmart or McDonald's, it's all on your phone. So if you look at it in the future, you're not going to use data pulling all that information. I'll show you one example of public and private land mixes that make it really difficult to find a good public spot using Google Maps later. The purple and orange line, that's the route I drove from near the Boulder area in Colorado to Lincoln. It's all dirt road. It's actually really nice and <laughs> fun road. And there are several campsites throughout, so it's worth it. But if you zoom in, that's what you see in Gaia. It's not all national forests. It's just, there are chunks of land that are private or some are leased out. In fact, there's state of Montana land right there. You'll notice they're just private land all throughout here and there. In fact, a lot of this, you'll see private land right along the road. Those are often mining rights or mining public land, private lands. So you can't really do much there. It's kind of, not ideal because there's all this public land to the west, but there's all this private land right there. But fortunately, there's roads here and there. And 
this is where it's hard to find public land exactly just looking through Google Maps LA pictures because it switches back to just all different types of land over and over and unless you know exactly where you're looking you can't really decide whether that's public land or not so it's nice to find big chunks of public land like between this whole area near Moose Creek campground just to be able to look at the satellite picture because it's it's just really hard not to and this is also another reason to get Gaia and the public lands overlay because when you're driving down this road are you gonna be able to see all this there are no signs there I <laughs> guarantee or there are signs but they're wrong um, it's possible the signs are right and the maps wrong too so but you have to be careful it's just that it's just nice seeing being able to see what's private and not so you kind of know to not stay there because camping at dispersed sites is great but you don't want to be camping on someone's private land and get a knock in your window in the middle of the night oftentimes closer to the highways or towns you'll see that the lands become more private land they're not necessarily private land. They're some private or city or county owned. It just Gaia doesn't differentiate that too much unless it's a public access area. So you see along the highway, it's all private. And then there's another public, private, and then it's public. So once you're in a good public area, you can find spots to camp out. In this example, I drove all the way through and camped out right next to a chunk of private land but it's private land right there so perfectly legal perfectly legal here's an example of blm land blm butte field office again it's just a huge mixture of public and private lands it's just a mess let me show you what the overlays look like if i make it a little more transparent as you can see you can still see it it's just not as obvious until you zoom in like here it's not as obvious but if you do this it's very obvious where you are here is an example of Montana State Trust Lands it's uh some places there but uh it's just a big mixture if you don't have I don't know about Montana exactly but I know with Arizona and New Mexico you must have a state trust land permit to stay overnight in one of these places so if you see this, you don't have, and you don't have the permit, you gotta drive right through. If you do have a permit, you actually can camp out to the sides. Don't listen to me 100% on this because it could be different for every state. So the state you choose, they may not allow dispersed camping on state trust lands. I know Arizona and New Mexico does. From there, as I go north, as you can see, there's a CDT markers here and there on Gaia. So this was a great road to intersect my girlfriend over and over as she hiked this segment and it dumped out on Lincoln and I was able to go visit pick her up at the intersection there over here was another dispersed campsite I discovered I knew I had to stay at Rogers Pass area so I saw this national forest land and saw this road that goes up and I gave it a shot and uh, pulled it up on Google Maps so let's show you that so there's Rogers Pass right now I looked up the road. The road is actually right there. Little Wolf Creek Road. So I looked up. Now, when you look at it, of course, it looks like you can actually camp right off the highway. It just would be very loud. But it's public land. So I went up the road. Ran up the road. I didn't see any campsites. That looked like a campsite. But it wasn't. There's nothing there, no firing, so you can't really tell any, any of this is a campsite. So I actually wound up looking quite far and you notice that road goes off. That looks like a campsite right there. And this road keeps going down. You'll see the switchbacks. So I opted for this. I marked over here at the end here, but I did not even see this road as I drove down. So that was one option that was gone. I also marked here, way too close to the road, but here's another one, pretty clear. And it looks like maybe not a firing, but a really busted up firing in the, right in the middle of the screen there. But it's a wide open area. So I thought I'd give it a shot. And that was where I stayed one night. 
If you go further, you'll see that looks like it could be a flat area, but it was a trick. It was a really steep embankment of dirt, so that would not have worked out. I put all my hopes on a couple of sites, that one and that one, but the second one worked out and fortunately not a soul drove by the whole time I was there because it was a pretty sketchy <laughs> road. Um, if you look in Gaia, you'll see elevation profiles pretty thin along the whole time. So it's a big, good drop off along the whole side. So along the whole CDT, only paid for a few campsites and those were only by national parks. Yellowstone National Park, believe it or not, there's a national forest. I approached from the east this time. There's national forest there and there's actually quite a bit of national forest, but as soon as you cross from private land to national forest, there are no camping signs everywhere. <laughs> every pullout, parking spot, road, boat dock, everywhere they say no camping. So fortunately they have campsites throughout that road, although you do have to pay. And I guess they did that so they can control how people are camping and make sure they put away their food correctly. So, I mean, near national parks, it's just very hard. One time I was at Glacier National Park and I drove for hours and I couldn't find anything that was available. There were people setting up tents on pullouts on the side of the road where if the road's too narrow, you pull over so someone could pass, but there were tents there. Um, it just people were just camping wherever they could and it was just not good. There was an old RV with laundry hanging also off a pullout right around a curve. So as you drove up, <laughs> it's just not good. Around national parks, the competition is super high. A lot of people want to stay multiple nights. So it's just harder to find a good spot and the good spots that are available, people will just set up gear and take off and just kind of hog the spot for a long time. So it's really difficult to find free spots around the national parks. That's why I found I just go into the national parks. If, if you can and try to camp inside, that way you don't have to drive out and in, out and in, over and over. You could just wake up in the morning and go hike and you got a home for the night for sure. So you can spend all your time just out hiking and enjoying the park and then come back late at night. I hope this information helped some of you find campsites that are free out west all over. Just remember the big rules is listen to the National Forest rules about fires. Just because of fire, there's a fire in there doesn't mean you're allowed to have a fire. In fact, most times it's just better not to have a fire unless you have enough water to completely douse it. So if there's a creek nearby, it's easier. But if you're carrying all the water you're going to be needing with you, can you use maybe half a gallon of water to completely douse the fire. So also remember to not park over grassy areas where your exhaust system might be contacting the dry grass. And then that actually has started fires in the past. Just things like that, basic common sense, leave no trace. And as long as everybody is good about their camping and follow the leave no trace principles, just pick up all your trash, leave the area as you found it or cleaner the national forest won't shut down the roads. That is the big catch, is sometimes you'll think that there are a bunch of campsites, but the national forest will have closed one of the gates. They have control of that and they are allowed to do it, but that often doesn't happen until the winter time when they don't want all the snow melt destroying all the roads. Because if the snow melts and the roads are all dirt anyway, and people drive on it, it's just gonna turn ruddy like crazy. So oftentimes they'll close the gates and let all the snow melt and once it dries up enough to open it and you can get out there. Also in the past, it has happened like in Arizona in the Sonoma area, they closed a bunch of national forest roads because people were abusing it, camping there and just leaving all their trash when they take off. So they actually shut it down to national, like dispersed camping. So that can happen anywhere. That was just in an area where it's just super high demand. But if people are bad about it enough, it's just going to happen. If people are out there just ripping up the roads, they're going to close the roads. So if everyone's good, respectful, all these public land campsites will be open for years and years. So everyone be responsible, be grown up about it, pick up after yourself. 
don't leave a mess and enjoy all that land that your tax dollars paid for basically.